Welcome to episode 27 of our series on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. As you know, there are thousands of surnames in these regions, so to make our task more manageable, we're focusing on pre-Civil War surnames. That's because the Industrial Revolution of the late 1800s introduced thousands more names across the Fruited Plains. Some of them, no doubt, made their way into major cities in the South and certain coal mining areas in central Appalachia. Each of the family names we'll examine today was requested by members of our YouTube community. You might note that I discuss surnames in the order that I receive them, and I appreciate the opportunity to serve as a resource for you. I also appreciate your patience as I make my way through the names still on our list. By request, I'm posting an email address to the vantage point in the description, so you can make a request for a surname catalog. It contains all the surnames that we've covered up through this week. So, today on the vantage point, we'll be talking about the origins and meanings of 10 common and not so common Appalachian and Southern surnames. I hope you'll join me. Let's get started. Number one, Forbes. Doesn't the surname Forbes project an image of business competence and wealth? There's Forbes Magazine, which is headed up by Steve Forbes. Steve has flirted with running for president on a few occasions. It's amazing how names and words can change in meaning over the centuries. In its old Scottish Gaelic form, it probably meant field. A northern Scottish field is a far cry from the opulence of Wall Street. The Anglo-Saxon use of the S pluralized it. Normally, the S would mean the son of Forbes, but it doesn't in this case. The surname is derived from Forbes lands in the Aberdeen area of Scotland. George Fraser Black traces Forbes land ownership records back to the 13th century, so it's a well-established family name in Scotland. In Ireland, it's considered a Scottish surname and is concentrated in County Longford. There are members of the McFurbis family in County Clare that use Forbes as a synonym. Forbes doesn't appear among the more common surnames in Ulster and Wales, so I think we in the South can safely call Forbes a Scottish surname. Number two, Combs. When I received the request for Combs, I fully expected more suggestions for it. Several more came in over the next few weeks. I met quite a few good folks named Combs during my days as a professor, and most of the people that I've met are from Eastern Kentucky. Dr. Margaret Combs, for instance, is a super talented CPA and professor of business at the University of Cumberland. She was my colleague for 10 years. Her roots are large in the area, so she has a lot of relatives that might just be in our audience. True to its Eastern Kentucky heritage, Combs is derived from Combe, C-O-M-B-E, which is Anglo-Celtic for a dweller in a hollow or valley. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if we hung around a sporting goods department in Walmart in Hazard, Kentucky. We might even hear a comment something like this. They some pretty combs girls up there in that holler. Well, <laughs> in Scotland and Ireland, comb is more common than combs. Number three, Atkinson. Atkinson or Akerson. I've been blessed throughout my life with some really good friends. Dr. Jimmy John Atkinson is one of the best. We were classmates at the University of Arkansas, and we graduated from there about 30 years ago. Later, we were colleagues at Northeastern Oklahoma A&M College, and most recently at the University of the Cumberlands in Kentucky. At any rate, Jim's last name started off as Atkins, which is a double diminutive for Adam. Atkinson is the son of Atkins. Adkins, with a D, is likewise a double diminutive of Adam. Atkinson is more common in England and Northern Ireland than its other forms. Akerson is more common in Scotland and Ireland. In fact, McGlassick and Black agree that Akerson is the Scottish spelling of Atkinson. It's not found among the common Welsh surnames. Number four, Howard. Last week, I produced a video on Mary, Queen of Scots, and in it, I talked some about Henry VIII, that's England's king, and his progeny. One of his unfortunate wives was none other than Catherine Howard. She was barely 20 years old when she was executed in the Tower of London. One chop with an ax and that was it. If you want to know why I think American justice, even with its faults, is better than what we left behind in Europe, just consider this. Catherine was convicted of not disclosing her sexual past to the king before marrying him. Her behavior was made illegal after the fact with the passage of the Royal Assent by Commission Act of 1541. 
At any rate, Howard is an Old Teutonic surname with versions scattered among the Old Norse and Old High German. It meant High Chief Warden or Guardian. Black doesn't include Howard in his book on Scottish surnames. It's found in Ireland as an anglicized form of I see no reason to disagree with Edmund McLeisick about the English origin of the Howard surname. Number five, Bruce. In Scottish history, there are few names that rise to the level of significance than that of Bruce. Of course, there are many people who would point out that Robert the Bruce, or Robert the First, held lands in England and Ireland, and he was of Norman descent. His surname began its existence as Brees, an old French word for brushwood. The Bruce family was in Yorkshire as landowners during the lifetime of William the Conqueror, so they were English before they were Scottish. The surname is in Ireland, but it's most common in Northern Ireland, where it arrived with Scottish settlers during the plantation of Ulster in the 17th century. Bruce isn't a French surname. It's a Scottish surname with linguistic roots in France. Number six, Dugan. This Irish Gaelic surname originally applied to a person with a dark complexion. In addition to Ireland and England, Dugan has a long history in Scotland. Black says that in Scotland, Dugan meant black. Since his last name is Black, he probably knows what he's talking about in this instance. Number seven, Butler. When I see or hear Butler, my mind goes in two different directions. Not the Rhett Butler, too, by the way. One is to a childhood neighbor in Tennessee, and Anderson County specifically, who had a thing for gigging frogs. The other is to Mr. French on an old TV show called Family Affair. I think he was played by Sebastian Cabot. Do you remember him? Butler is French in origin. It was applied to the keeper of bottles. The French word for a bottle keeper is boutillier. In Ireland, it's considered an Anglo-Norman name, but its bearers have been hibernicized. Interestingly, it's common in all Irish provinces except for Ulster. As with other Norman names, it's found in the 12th century Scottish records, so I think a person would need a paper trail to locate the origins of your line of Butler. Number eight, Goins. This seemingly simple surname has an interesting origin story. It's a shortened version of the Irish name Goings. McClassic claims that the surname had two early applications. First, it could be a form of a French Goin, or it could be another form of McGowan. The Dictionary of American Surnames calls it an Irish surname, and I see no reason to disagree with that claim. Number nine, Mater or Mater. I was excited to get this request. It's seldom that I receive a request for a surname that doesn't have a historical presence in Great Britain or Ireland. Mater or Mater is a German surname that was derived from one who mowed grass. A mater prepped grass, or hay, for later consumption by livestock. I have a few relatives that raise beef and dairy cattle, so I know that gathering hay is an important part of their lives, even today. A mater was an important occupation in medieval Germany. Number 10, Powell. As a resident of the beautiful Powell Valley of Virginia and Tennessee, I was excited to get this request. Powell is the 25th most common surname in Wales. It's a Welsh surname that means Howell's son. And looking around Great Britain and Ireland for other places where Powell might be clustered, I can tell you that it's not well distributed. It's found in all provinces of Ireland and England, but it's not listed among the Scottish surnames in Black's seminal book. Well, friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you got something meaningful out of our discussion. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a whole lot. I invite you to check out all the videos on the Vantage Point. In addition to surnames of Appalachia in the South, they cover a wide range of topics. Just last week, I posted a video on the tragic life of Mary, Queen of Scots. You ought to check it out. If the man warrants it, I'll be back soon with another episode on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. I hope to see you then. God bless you and yours. Bye-bye.